Today I want to talk a bit about one of the newest additions to the Sycor product portfolio, Sycor CDP. As you might know, Sycor CDP comes to us through the acquisition of BoxEver. Since we are currently in the process of blending the BoxEver application in the Sycor product family, you might notice some BoxEver references throughout this presentation. My name is Mark van Aalst, and I am working for Sycor close to 10 years now. I am a part of the developer advocacy group that resides within technical marketing. It's our goal to help developers get the most out of the Sycor products as possible. Before joining Sycor, I worked for several agencies implementing Sycor. So as said, today I will provide you with some more insights into Sycor CDP. As a Sycor developer, you might wonder what a CDP is, where does it live and how you can implement or better said leverage the CDP functionalities. Today's agenda covers some basics of Sycor CDP, what sort of functionality it offers and how does it all work together. And then I will talk a bit more on the technical aspects about integrating CDP and the options you have there. Finally, I will show you how our demo development team implemented CDP in one of our existing demo environments. So let us start with some basics. What is Sycor CDP? The acronym CDP stands for Customer Data Platform which essentially is a fancy name for a database full of customer data. This might sound simple, might sound simple but Sycor CDP allows you to gather customer data from various sources. The obvious one here is the web and all interactions people have on the internet. But it could very well be that the customer has an interaction with a contact center or places an order by phone or goes to a physical store. All that information will find its way towards the CDP. Another part of Sycor CDP is the decisioning. This is where a lot of data is being processed and analyzed to provide next best actions. Decision models allow users to combine rules, AI and programmable logic to make intelligent, precise and consistent decisions in real time for every customer endpoint. Test, learn and repeat. That is key to running experiments with Sycor CDP. Experiments or tests can be run for web elements where you want to test certain design elements or text. But you're also able to test elements that are typically handled within the backend, product discounts, recommendations, or messaging. Then we reach the experiences part. Here you can act on all the data gathered and analyzed. The first option available is to use web experiences. Web experiences provide the ability to do client-side testing and personalization. As the name implies, web experiences focus on adding functionality to the website or your mobile website. So for example, adding overlays, pop-up notifications, or any other HTML elements. You can create web experiences using existing templates or build them yourself using HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Use dynamic data that has been processed by decision models to provide that contextual data to your visitors. The other option is to use full stack experiences, which can run server-side testing and personalization and can be used on any channel. Being able to run this server-side allows you to run testing and personalization deep into your tech stack. All these features combined are what Sycor CDP is all about. So let us see how this works when we combine all these features. As said, the CDP is the main entry point for all the customer data. Behavioral data from websites or mobile apps is getting captured using the Sycor CDP JavaScript library. The capturing of events from the web and mobile web channels is facilitated through the stream APIs. There are two main stream APIs to leverage. The browser API that enables you to extend functionality within a web browser or other HTTP clients. And you can use this browser interface to manage cookies in the browser that helps identify guests and facilitate personalization. The event API enables event processing. For example, you can use the event API to send, to send events in at speed from mobile applications or your website. The event API a Sycor CDP's fire, fire and Forget style service for capturing online behavior. One important thing to know is that these stream APIs are only used for writing, for writing data to the platform. If you would like to consume data from the CDP, you would need to use interactive APIs. 
you can use any REST client inside your application to communicate with those APIs, which allows you to locate, create, update, retrieve, and delete data. Interactive APIs help meet crucial integration requirements and allows data to be easily combined using mashups, while enabling you to extend on a set of base REST services. For example, you might want to use your own custom attribute and make these available to CDP resources. To do this, you can use a data extension resource, which is a schemaless JSON object that permits specific name value pairs. Then we have the batch API. This supports the uploading of large amounts of data in an efficient manner. This data can include guests information, orders, uh, tracking events, which customers can source in from the internal systems before sending it to the CDB platform for processing. Once the CDP has customer data, it's time to use it. Business users can model and execute decisions which are determined by business rules. These decision models can be fed information using connections to artificial intelligence platforms or other data systems. Common connections that are used are email service providers. These can, for example, be used for triggered experiences, which can send personalized emails to your customers. But also data like weather forecasts could be used. As said, it's, all possible to connect, it's also possible to connect with AI platforms. So for example, we could combine that weather forecast and the customer's historic buying behavior to run machine learning and find products that we could recommend to that user. Now we reach the point where we are able to contact the customer. As said earlier, we could use triggered experiences where we would send out a message to the customer using email, for example, or use a web experience to add messages to the site. We could also run experiments like A-B testing to find out what will be the way the message has the most impact. Let's have a look at a basic integration process. This example shows how a typical website would interact with Cycro CDP. First, the client library would need to get downloaded to the visitor's device. Once initiated, it will do, it will do an asynchronous call to the stream API in which the browser API responds with a cookie for the user. Starting now, it is possible to track and register events so you are ready to send behavioral data to the event API. And using the interactive REST API, we are able to request interaction data. So now, let's see this in action with our demo. So as mentioned earlier, we're going to use a demo application that has been delivered, uh, has been developed by our own Psycho demo team. Uh, important to know is that they developed this application prior to the acquisition of Box Ever, uh, and after that they implemented uh, the CDP in this uh, already existing application. The application itself runs on top of uh, JSS uh, and it's uh, hosted on an XM solution. So here you see the Lighthouse Fitness application. Um, it's an application that shows all sorts of sports events. Um, as you can see, I've opened it up in the iPad simulator in my um, in my ad browser, and I've enabled the developer tool so that we can see what's going on behind the scenes. So you see that immediately that, well, as I said, it's a JSS application, so uh, it gets the application definition, uh, it gets some dictionary phrases, uh, also the information from Sitecore itself, so we can see what route it follows, there's a bit of the context there, uh, but that's for now, that's not important. Um, let's see what it else it gets. So we see that we have some calls here, um, get guests by reference. And if we look at the response here, you see that our CDP to which this call goes to responds with the identity status of a visitor. So we have no clue who this actual uh, person is. We can see uh, the first scene, well, that's right now, and um, therefore the record has been created. We can browse around the website right now. Uh, we can see all these sort of sporting events. We can go into details on those sporting events, find a bit more information. Um, we can go to the page that has all these sporting events as well. So we can do that right here. And here we see all the events available within our solution. And at the same time, you see those requests um, being fired uh, to the CDP. So all that information is being stored. So what does that actually look like? Well, let me open up the CDP. 
I'm logged into the CDP, and one of the first things we have on the top left side is the customer data. So I'm going to guest right now. And important to know it's filtered right now. It's on uh, based on customer. Uh, so let's set them to all. And then we see that we have an anonymous visitor. So that visitor started four minutes ago, which will be my session. And going by the timeline, we can see session details. So there's one session. Um, it's an app. It's on a mobile. It's an iPad in this case, and it's open up the Lighthouse Fitness app. So the session is still going on. Let's go into the session details, and here we can see the, actually what happened. So we can see that I visited the page, uh, I went to the marathon page, then I went to the all events page. So all of that information is now already being stored within our CDP, um, regardless that we don't know who the actual visitor is. So let's go back to our application. And let's see if we can sign up for an event. So let's take this uh, Holman 5K run. And we can register here to sign up. And then we already need to create an account for that. Well, let's go one step back. Uh, let's say that we want to personalize. So we want to personalize our experience. Here it says, what is your favorite sport? So for me, I'm an, uh, a fan of running. So let's say I'm a runner and I am a little bit above average and continue. Then we see here a create guest data extension, which is a uh, method being called in our uh, box average service that we are uh, creating, have created with our own application. And we can see that immediately it has been sent to a box average. So it says you're a running fan and skill level is six. So going back to BoxEver, going to the properties of that user, and let me reload that. To the properties here, we see a sporting preference. Let's click into the details. So the sport preference is running, and my skill level, level is six, which would be the integer behind that slide that you just noticed. So I'm closing this, and still the visitor information is unknown. We have no clue who the actual visitor is other than it's a person who, well, browsed the web page and um, gave some interest there. So going back, let's refine this a bit. Let's say that I am a male and I am within the 35 to 50 range. I'll continue. And again, you see that that method is being uh, fired upon and you see that more information is now shown. Going back to box over again, and let me reload this quickly. We see custom guest data, demographics, age and gender. So that's also being stored within our record currently. So let me just uh, save this. And let's say that I am a uh, John Walker. And I will continue. And thank you. Now my personalized experience has been set up and the app also greets me. Hello, John Walker. At the same time, you might have guessed already that information is stored within Box Ever. Going back, reload this page. And you can now see that, hey, we are no longer a visitor. We just a, we became a customer, a customer with the name of John Walker. And we have an email. So going back into that timeline, we see the session. Checking out the session details, you can see here a few seconds ago, our guest has been identified as John Walker. This is a typical example of how a uh, flow on a website would go and, and you will gather more and more information uh, until that point where people fill in a form and, and try to identify or give, give their identity to your application. So now that we know how this application works on the uh, well in, within the front end, let me show you a bit of a uh, code on how it actually works within the application itself in the in the source files. So here we have VS Code. I have our uh, well our source code for our application, and in this case you can see it's just a well regular uh, Psycho JSS app in that sense. Um, so here we have the source code. Go into the index which is responsible for actually rendering the app or the start of the rendering. Um, you can see here, and um, it's been documented as well. You can see here that we're, well, as soon as we know that our box server client is being configured, which is an, an app setting in this case, uh, we are gonna create the HTML element, which is responsible for loading that 
the client side uh, JavaScript file uh, from our CDN. So that's actually what's been ha what's happening right here. And as soon as that client side um, application or the client side file has been downloaded into our application, it does a request to a toolbox ever and it says, okay, do you know me? So it checks whether there's a cookie or not. And it, um, it asks if the visitor, if the, well, that device is already known. And if not, it's identified as a visitor before it becomes some, uh, before it becomes a customer. So that's the initial part. The second part is we have a box server service in this case, uh, which is more or less a wrapper around the API uh, from uh, from box ever uh, from Cycle CDP, uh, which we are well using uh, well created certain method methods called certain flows, or uh, we're gonna log um, uh, events that are, are happening, so we can do some uh, some tracking of those pages, uh, identification all of sorts. Um, this is really responsible for everything that happens within that application and. In a sense, it's just making requests to the box ever API. So how does that API look like? Well, luckily these days we have a tool called Postman and let me show you that. Before doing that, let me copy this ID because this is the user ID for my user. So here's Postman and as you can see, I have a get visitor profile um, event already up and running. You can see that we're calling a endpoint right here. Um, so we just need to make sure that we're using that. Uh, we're going to get that customer profile information, but we need to make sure that we actually get that current customer. So we paste the ID, we just copy it here. And let's see whatever we're getting if we're sending that information. So we can see that already we have a Jada Walker at example.com. So this is the um, individual that we are just registered as within our Cycle CDP. Uh, you can see the basic information here. There's also some additional information and in sport preference. So let's copy paste this and in the URL, let's say expand equals sport preference. Now the request gets loaded to box over again to Cycle CDP. And then you'll see here that we have our sport preferences. So we see this running variable here and we see that my skill level is six. So you can imagine that by uh, using this API, you can also like, let's say track people. Let's say that I have registered for an event and I'm uh, actually going towards that event and then I have an, a mobile app uh, and that can register whether I, well, actually participated or not. Or a, uh, as, a, as a runner, you typically have a tag whenever you do um, like competitive running. Um, my tag could register the time that I spent um, for that 5K run. So let's see if I have a custom event in here. Um, let's say that I want to register this for this particular user. So I have my user ID here. Somehow my user ID got known. Um, I'm saying I'm participating in the Holman 5K run, um, type of running, distance 5K, location, Holman, time completed. But I could add additional information as well. Um, that Therefore, I could, it's just key value pair. And I could say, uh, for example, sponsored by, and let's say in his case, sponsored by Sycor. As you can see in this original um, get visitor profile request, there is nothing in this, uh, uh, there's no data extension in this case that gives me completed activities or as I'm calling it here, yeah, completed activities. So that's not known right now. There's no schema for it whatsoever. I can just put this um, application. Let's say that I'm gonna use basic auth again and I'm gonna post this to this endpoint. Let's see what happens. So let's send the information. Now, if everything went well, the information should be stored within our CDP. So let's visit our CDP one more time. Let's reload it just to make sure the information is there. Let's go to the properties. And in here, I immediately see I have my completed activities. So let's check the details. In this case, the home of 5K run, which matches the information we just sent. And we can see the distance and we can see if it's sponsored by which is something we totally made up. So as you can see, you can paste, or you can you, know, you can send information, almost any information towards the CDP and it gets registered. And then that information can be used to uh, personalize further along. So it is a really powerful way of centralizing all of your customer information and um, act on that information. If you would like to learn more about Psycho CDP, please visit learning.psycho.com 
or read the documentation on the Saigo documentation site.